I believe we're ready to get started. Um, so I'd like to welcome you all to our webinar today. My name is Jennifer Schmidt. I am the Illinois Solar for All Program Manager. Um, we are going to, we can start with the next slide, please. So to go over a few housekeeping issues before we get started, um, just to let you know before we uh, get started, to reduce any background noise, all participants are muted upon entry. Um, we also have enabled live, live transcript for the meeting today. If you wish to hide it, you can click on the uh, live transcript button and then uh, click hide subtitle. Um, we should have plenty of time for questions today at the end of the webinar. So if you would like to place any questions that you have in the chat feature at the bottom of the Zoom window, we should be able to address those. Um, another thing, as you may have noticed, uh, today's session is being recorded. A recorded version of this session will be uh, available on the IPA's website under the Renewables page in the Renewable Workshop. Um, actually, that may not be right. It might just be on the uh, IPA website. We'll make sure that it's in the right place. Um, and then finally, I've had some laptop issues this week, so we're keeping cameras off. And if my machine locks up, uh, some of my colleagues may have to jump in. Um, so with that, uh, we'll get started. Uh, next slide. So uh, we are in the process of selecting a new evaluator for the Illinois Solar for All program. Um, as we have stated in our uh, release for this uh, webinar, there is a request for feedback that is uh, out and was released on July 1st of this year. Um, we have the stakeholder feedback webinar today in which we're discussing those, uh, that proposal and the feedback questions that we asked. And then the responses for those feedback questions are due on July 22nd. Our plan for releasing a request for qualifications is to publish the RFQ late in August of this year with responses due by early September, and then hopefully announce the uh, qualified responses uh, in late September, or early October. And at the same time that we released those, we would publish the uh, request for proposals that would be open for the qualified uh, respondents. Um, and the proposals would then be due in November of this year, and then the evaluator selection announced in December. Um, and uh, so I think we are, in the process of, um, it, with the information that we get from the stakeholder feedback process, we will be including these, um, this information in our uh, request for qualifications and how we, and our request for proposals and how we are setting up the uh, evaluation for Illinois Solar for All. Uh, next slide. Mm -hmm. So evaluation in Illinois Solar for All is rooted in Section 156B6 of the IPA Act. It instructs the agency to select an independent evaluator for Illinois Solar for All every two years. And it also states that the evaluation should be based on objective criteria that's developed through a stakeholder process. Additionally, it states that a summary report is required. Next slide. So to do, I think we skip one, we can go back one. Just to give an overview of what evaluation we've been doing to date. Um, the, uh, I'm not going to get into the details of all of these and you can find a more detailed list of the elements that are included in these evaluations, as well as some of our new proposed topics in Appendix A and we'll also be going over those a little bit later. The phase one evaluation that was released in October 20, excuse me, 2019 focused more on the development process of Illinois Solar for All prior to its opening in 2019. Um, as you can see, it focused on the initial implementation, the design and feedback processes that we had for various facets of uh, the program, and then it offered some findings and recommendations for moving forward. The phase two evaluation reports had six month reporting periods. 
And we list uh, the major elements in, of the various reports here to show that there was some variation in the focus of the reports. So there may have been a focus on, for instance, uh, let's see, for, this, for the first interim report, uh, there was some program administrator assessment and stakeholder outreach design and feedback kind of left over from the phase one, I believe. And if we go to the next slide, we can see that some of these um, focus topics changed, um, well, not, didn't change, but there were different focuses for the various uh, reports that we released. Um, and then we can go to the next slide. So along with the final evaluations reports release in October of 2021, a 10 page summary report was also published. And this contained a condensed program overview, description of evaluate, evaluation activities, key metrics and recommendations. So this is just a very brief overview of what evaluation has been going on so far. Um, and the scope of this phase of the cycle of evaluations ended in October of 2021. And so we are uh, preparing for our next cycle to cover program years 2022 and 2023. Uh, next slide. As we consider our approach for Illinois Solar for All in this next cycle, we are especially wanting to ensure that the evaluation reports and the materials that we're producing are not just uh, useful to the IPA and the program administrator to enhance the program, but that it's also useful uh, and accessible in formats and style for uh, our program stakeholders, participants, and partners. And that's a really big audience. Um, to make that even bigger, as an income eligible solar program, there aren't extensive examples of similar programs in other states. And all of these programs have unique circumstances that impact their program design and uh, implementation. Best practices are still being figured out, and Illinois Solar for All is looked at by other programs and groups nationwide in determining what's working best for these still rather novel program ideas that's connecting a growing solar, in, a growing solar market with income eligible and economic justice communities. So all of that to say is that we are really interested in understanding how stakeholders want to use Illinois Solar for All evaluation and what elements would be useful. As far as the structure that we're proposing uh, for the scope of this reporting period covering uh, program year 2022 and 2023, our proposal is to have two comprehensive annual reports, one for each program year. The reports would include program metrics, um, which would include the uh, experiences of those that interact with the program, participants, stakeholders, approved vendors, subcontractors would include analysis and improvement recommendations. And it's also notable that um, the separate, the two program years that will be in the scope are covering uh, implementation of Illinois Solar for All before CJA's implementation and after. So PY22 is the program year we're just coming out of, and that's going to be the last year of Illinois Solar for All under FIJA alone. Um, with CJA's passing and our update of the long-term renewable resources procurement plan, um, there are going to be some major changes in Illinois Solar for All. And so what the program looked like and, and what these program years are looking like with all of the changes uh, that are uh, coming into play, uh, they're going to look very different. Um, in addition to the annual reports, we propose having one or two mid-year reports that are shorter and provide more targeted analysis of a specific topic or issue. Next slide. So um, I'm not going to go through these extensively because they are all in uh, Appendix A of our stakeholder feedback document. Um, we, out, we list out the uh, specific elements that we had proposed last time and then we also um, include some proposed new elements. Um, on this slide, you can see that the uh, that 
The law includes uh, a number of elements that must be included in evaluation. Um, so, you know, the, those are ones that you would pretty much expect number of projects, capacity, um, cost of co cost per kilowatt, and so on. And then additionally, um, we propose analyzing these metrics under by the sub program, by DG versus community solar, by owners and renters. Um, and so we're looking at these uh, various metrics as they are applied to various aspects of the program and program participation. Next slide. This goes into more of the various um, parts of Illinois Solar for All that we are looking to evaluate and some of the elements under each of those areas, economic, social, and environmental benefits um, and job and job opportunities. Next slide. And then in addition, we have a few performance metrics that we propose and then also evaluation of the program administrator's performance. Uh, so this is looking at not just the program as it's implemented, but how it's being implemented and um, looking for what those impacts are. Next slide. And then finally, these are some other topics that uh, we are in, we're proposing to add to the evaluation. Um, we are we have a new uh, expectation to uh, for energy sovereignty goals in Illinois Solar for All, and we'll be looking at the implementation of those. Uh, we're looking at the grassroots education outcomes and trying to get a better idea of what the impacts are. Uh, at at the community level from the grassroots education efforts. Um, and we're looking at what the impacts, we're trying to look at what the impacts of the job training requirements. Um, what are the impacts on the approved vendors that are enrolling the trainees? What are the impacts on the trainees themselves? Um, so there are a number of elements that we are proposing and we welcome uh, feedback on all of those, either as proposed or additions uh, that you would recommend. Next slide. So to get into the questions that we have proposed for feedback, um, these are just copy and paste from our uh, stakeholder feedback document. Um, the first one being, uh, does the proposed evaluation plan of developing one or two uh, brief mid-year reports, as well as a comprehensive year-end report and summary, sufficiently balance the needs to fully evaluate the program and the need to provide time in between evaluations to implement and uh, implement the recommendations and assess results. We, will, we wanna make sure that our evaluation efforts are comprehensively assessing the program, but given the uh, unstoppable program cycle, we are trying to make sure that we are producing evaluations in a time frame that gives the evaluator proper time to do their research and create the report. And we also wanna make sure that we're getting this information at times when it's useful. So whether that's in the development of our long-term plan um, or updates or the usual ongoing up improvements that we're making to Illinois Solar for All that improve the experience and impact of the program. Second question asks about the metrics and indicators uh, that could evaluate the program's incorporation of DEI, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion goals. The IPA is wanting to make sure that we are incorporating uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion ideals into all of our activities and programs. And though there are already some elements that exist within Illinois Solar for All to boost participation from, for instance, MWBE approved vendors and encouraging Solar for All development in income eligible and environmental justice communities, We'd like to uh, get feedback from stakeholders on what elements could incorporate into the evaluation, that what elements we could incorporate that would be indicators of success in those efforts, and as a guide to seeing where those efforts are not producing increased program involvement uh, for everyone at all levels of the program. Question three, um, what audiences will use these evaluation reports? Uh, what particular information would be useful and in what formats. <clears throat> As I said before, we want to know who else is or is wanting to use uh, 
the Illinois Solar for All eval evaluation and what material is useful in, for your purposes. Question four, uh, given that the data for the adjustable block program projects would not include demographic information of project hosts, is there analysis of Illinois Solar for All system metrics against ADP system metrics that would be useful for stakeholders? Um, so just a quick background for those that aren't familiar, the adjustable block program is Illinois, uh, it's also known as Illinois Shines. Uh, it's Illinois' market rate solar incentive program that the IPA also administers. And we're wanting to know if stakeholders would like any comparison and analysis of ADP against solar for all. Um, understanding that the um, reporting for ADP is very different from solar for all, especially around the participant data. So we're thinking that the comparable data may be limited to project system metrics, but we're open to um, ideas of what other comparisons we could make between ADP and solar for all, given the systems that we have in place to collect data. And then finally, what other uh, objective criteria should be evaluated? So uh, we're generally open to other ideas and thoughts about Illinois solar for all um, evaluation efforts. And we, we consider feedback on evaluation design outside of what we've covered in these five questions or in our proposal. Um, next slide. I think I kind of blew through that. Um, so with that, I will, uh, oh, this, we, uh, the responses are due to IPA solar, ipa.solar at illinois.gov uh, by July 22nd. And we give a, um, naming standard for the subject line, if you could. Um, so that helps us make sure that we are catching all of the responses that come to that email um, and that we're able to properly identify them. And just a note that all responses will be published on the Illinois Solar for All and IPA websites. And so if you are wishing to designate portions of your uh, response as confidential or proprietary, you should note that and also submit a redacted version that we would be able to publish. So with that, I will ask Sarah if we have any questions, because I think that's our last slide. Uh, no, nothing so far. So if anyone has any clarification questions or um, comments on what Jen just presented, um, feel free to go ahead and, and enter in the chat now. Jen, I also want to emphasize that the recording of this session will be available on the IP website under renewables, um, renewable workshop page. So actually you were correct in the okay. beginning. Yeah. Good, good. Thank you. It looks like John Delury has a question. I don't know if we're able to unmute. Should we just unmute him or Mega? I know we had planned to read them out from the chat, but since no one else has questions. Hey, thanks, Sarah. Sorry mm -hmm. uh, for not following protocol there. <laughs> I was That's typing okay. it out as, as we spoke. Um, but was wondering if there had been any like presentations or stakeholder sessions that the prior evaluator was expected to host to sort of breathe additional life into the reports. I just couldn't recall if it was just launch of the written reports or if there were additional touch points for different stakeholders to engage. Um, I don't have the dates off uh, in front of me, but I do remember that um, within the evaluator, the last evaluator cycle, there was a uh, stakeholder feedback opportunity, I think, after the phase one uh, report was released. Um, I know it was in like, uh, it was during the winter, if I remember, it was like a November, December date, maybe 2019, um, which would have been after the first report. 
So we did have kind of like a brief report and uh, stakeholder feedback at that time. And then at the end of the evaluation cycle, I think in October of uh, last year, there was another presentation um, by the previous uh, evaluator to present uh, their findings and, um, and be available to ask questions. So, um, and I, I don't recall, I mean, we usually record everything. So I'm not, I don't recall off the top of my head that we didn't, but um, I, we can look at our um, websites and see if that information was posted previously. Does that answer your question, John? Great, thanks. <clears throat> thanks, John. We had another question in there, but it's about incentive levels. So unfortunately that's outside the scope of this webinar. Um, as a reminder, we're only covering the process and the substantive elements of the evaluation of ILSA. We're not covering program elements in this webinar. So any other questions or clarifications on the process for the evaluation of the program? I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Um, so Jen, it looks like we might be wrapping up early. We can also stay on sure. until 12.30, just in case questions come up, but um, I'm not seeing anything else at this time. That sounds fine. Um, well, I thank you all for joining us. And I do hope that um, we really do want robust feedback for these stakeholder feedback sessions that we have for not just this topic, but for other topics. So I do hope that those that have um, comments and thoughts on these um, topics that you are submitting um, responses, because they are very valuable to us from all respondents. Um, so we have one question about the next steps. Um, can you go back to the timeline slide, Mega? That should be about slide three or so, I think. Okay, so um, the feedback responses for, for this uh, feedback session are due on July 22nd. Pardon me, we're planning on publishing the RFQ in late August, um, and then those uh, responses would be due in early September. Um, after the request for qualifications uh, has been, uh, the responses have been scored and announced, then we would release the uh, RFP for those that had, that were uh, considered qualified from the RFP process. Does that answer your question, Jennifer? Great, thank you. We, I see somebody has their hand raised, uh, Emily? Hi, yes, um, this is Emily Cole from Kofi, um, which is a grassroots educator through ILSFA. Um, I just have a couple comments about selecting an evaluator um, to include in the RFP. Um, I think being part of the evaluation process in previous years, I think it would be helpful to perhaps give preference to Illinois-based evaluators um, who have more knowledge of the kind of the landscape of Illinois. It seemed like sometimes there were questions that were um, made because they didn't understand, um, didn't have any kind of natural knowledge of, um, of the state or the program. Um, I think also incorporating um, just a different process of how they'll be engaging um, recipients of grassroots education. Um, so interested residents, homeowners, because um, there was a kind of disconnect on um, letting people know that they'd be receiving a call with questions um, and that ended up confusing some folks. Um, 
So thinking about maybe incorporating a focus group or other ways that um, we can get feedback for um, for the program from interested residents um, without having cold calls, which kind of lead to more distrust of the program when they don't know what it's about. Thanks. Thanks, uh, appreciate your comments. And um, again, I do encourage you to also uh, submit a written response because um, you know we value those ideas and you know we want to make sure that we're understanding them at the depth that you're um, presenting them and that you have uh, thoughts on. Thanks for sharing that. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, I'm happy to stick around a few more moments, um, but I think we may have wrapped up the content and uh, it seems like any questions that are coming in from the audience. So thank you all very much. And I look forward to seeing your responses.